Next, let's examine a, an historical uh, significant reaction, and that is saponification, which really comes from the idea of making soap. And indeed, this is the main reaction you would use to turn a fat into soap. Now, how this process works is we start off with an ester, and we're able to convert that ester into a carboxylic acid. And so if we were making soap, the R group that we would have would be quite a long carbon chain, somewhere between 12 and usually 18 carbons long. And there may be some unsaturation in there, depending on which oil you're starting with. So we have an ester. And then we will need to add some base. And this could be either sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. Either will work. And if we were talking historically, they would have used ashes from a wood fire because that contains quite a bit of either potassium and sodium hydroxide. So we'll add a little bit of methanol in as our solvent. And then afterwards, we'll have an acid workup step, which is not something that you would do if you were making soap. But it is something we would do if we wish to obtain the carboxylic acid. So our products are simply the carboxylic acid portion from our ester and then the portion that comes from the, the alkyl group off of the oxygen here will turn into an alcohol. So let's briefly look at the mechanism and then we can examine why this reaction will not happen in reverse. We begin by having a nucleophilic attack of a hydroxide on the acyl group. And those electrons are going to again move up to the oxygen. So now we have our hydroxide, it's now attached to this carbon. Next we'll have this collapse back down and our leaving group leave. And you'll notice something interesting. We now have formed a carboxylic acid, but we have a very strong base that was generated by our leaving group, or is our leaving group. And so immediately, this is going to deprotonate the carboxylic acid. And this process will not be reversible because a carboxylic acid is uh, a fair bit acidic, a lot more than the corresponding alcohol. And so this process will no longer be able to reverse. Now, transesterification was able to reverse because the two leaving groups, or the attacking group and the leaving group, were essentially the same. We had an alkoxide in both cases. Here, we do not. 
right? We had a hydroxide, which is going to form a carboxylic acid, and that will be readily deprotonated, eliminating that alkoxide from being able to attack. And that's essentially why this reaction cannot go in the reverse direction. Because instead of attacking the carbonyl carbon, it will attack that proton. Now, I suppose that you could protect it, but essentially if you are protecting this, you're turning it back into an ester and then you're doing transesterification. So, either way, can't really reverse this. And then next, if we're going ahead with our step two here, we'll protonate this. And form the carboxylic acid. Now, again, there are uh, barriers for this to go in the reverse order. Even if we were to add a large excess of this alkoxide base, knowing that we'd have to deprotonate uh, one of the groups before then we could have an attack, this is now going to be negatively charged. And then we would be asking a negatively charged species to, a, to attack, right? We've got a negatively charged alkoxide to attack a negatively charged species. And those are going to repel each other. And so therefore, another barrier for it to go in the reverse direction. But again, this is a very important historically important reaction where we can convert esters into carboxylic acids.